Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Admo Markets. My name is Chris, and today we're going to take a look at this live webinar, of course, at the charts and uh, look at some instruments like Forex and commodities, maybe some stock indices as well. Before we do that, though, be aware that this webinar is shown to a global audience but may not be suitable for everyone. Take a look at this link, admiralmarketsglobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact the appropriate entity to find out more information about that. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk, may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and is for informational and educational purposes only. And by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer, and you're also aware of the risk involved when trading. Alrighty. So before we kick off the webinar, though, just bear with me for a second. I got some uh, interesting uh, news for you. Admiral Markets has uh, a campaign, basically, or, or a, a window of two months where you have an opportunity to get a deposit bonus. That's for existing and new traders, uh, as far as I'm aware. Take a look, at, though, at the, all of the conditions, of course, as you can uh, find on the website. Just click on Get Your Bonus. And uh, you can find out more information. Let me go right there to the site and you can see it. Grow stronger, deposit bonus up to 50%. So the only thing you have to do is click on get your bonus. And uh, you can calculate what your bonus could be depending on how much capital you are adding. All right. So it's, it's a cool slider you can play around with and see what that could be. Uh, do read the campaign rules and risk disclosure though. To find out all the details uh, right here at the bottom all right but uh i wanted to let you know that this valid for uh, april and may and uh, i think one of the things that you have to look at is that the it's the, it's the bonus is for the first deposit so you want to make sure that you know if you're depositing a thousand euros that you don't do 500 now and 500 at the end of may that's not how it works you just have to you know it's, it's within 24 hours first deposit so that's one of the things you want to check uh, but uh, otherwise you can nicely capitalize on some extra funding from Admiral Market so take a look that's very exciting and I think it's always a great opportunity to use it as a margin uh, and of course hopefully also unlock that bonus choose something that you think makes sense uh, I mean if you have uh, a uh, you know, a, a million account, then uh, you can go for this beautiful pr personal pr proposal, right? But if you have a small account, like a thousand euros, I mean, don't go for uh, too much because then you'll have a high volume and it's more difficult to unlock that bonus. So try to choose something that you think, okay, I, I'm still trading about what I normally would and I have a good chance to unlock that bonus. All righty. Let's take a look at the calendar. All right, Aussie stayed the same. And uh, what else do we have? <clears throat> Excuse me. Canadian balance of trade, PMI on the dollar. We had a lot of news events. Some of the green, yellow, some red, mostly green, yellow. I'm trying to see if there's any pound news, but I don't think so. There's a uh, PMI in the services. That's still, I think, an interesting one. So that's something to be, it's yellow, but still, I think that's something to uh, to be aware of. All right. Moving on to the heat map, we can see some big uh, stock movers, uh, some uh, currency pairs that moved a lot too, the ruble especially, silver as well, gold as well, Facebook on the downside. Let's take a look at our currency pairs and we see pound. What do we see? Pound New Zealand and pound odd. Those were the biggest ones to the upside and a lot of volatility as well. We got Euro odd, Euro New Zealand and pound cat as well here. And on the downside, we have some yen pairs finally. And those yens are moving nicely to the downside. Pound, the biggest volatile. New Zealand surprisingly second. Dollar again towards the bottom. That pattern we see more often. So that's not so surprising. Alrighty, so let me open, uh, let me grab the charts here and the deposit bonus. Good morning, Beverly, and 
Hi, Aleph. Good to see you. That deposit bonus is on new accounts, but I think also on existing accounts. So that should be for both. And Aleph is asking, as we see rate is unchanged, that means it will not affect the Aussie today or before the next rate. That means it will not affect the Aussie today or before the next rate. I'm not sure if I understand. Oh, you mean the, the fact that the rate has been unchanged. Okay. Well, it depends on the market expectations. We can take a look um, what that was. Let's see. It's not only basically, you're not only looking at what the current figure is compared to forecasted or the previous, right? But also uh, what, yeah, basically the opinion is. So forecasted, of course, is you would see normally uh, the opinion in the forecast, but not always. What I mean is that the forecast could be 2%, but maybe there's still a substantial minority that might expect a quarter percent a drop, for instance, right? Uh, or maybe it's a, a forecast, 2% forecast that's very solid and there's very little divergence and everyone expect, or mostly everyone expects that. So then, you know, there's uh, the actual figure really matches the forecasted one. So that is always a, you know, a bit of a question mark. Now I'm not a news trader, so I don't really dive into that. I don't follow what is expected only with the very big, figures perhaps a bit but uh, for me the news event is, is is not something i'm looking to to trade uh, beverly adds that sometimes an ex, an, ex, an expected drop um is priced in already and if it doesn't happen price will basically be adjust so you got all these and these expectations and what it turns out to be and and all these things Maybe one of the reasons why I'm not really that big of a fan of, of trading that way. All right, so we saw pound basically move a lot, right? And uh, also yen. So I got the yen chart in front of me. So why don't we start with the yen? And in that case, the dollar yen we're looking at. <clears throat> and um, price breaking through this bottom. I should move it just a tad lower here, actually. Like this, right? And we had a triple bottom, and now there could be a break. So uh, I took profit on this trade, and uh, I was aiming for 111. I it was a conservative target, and I knew that, and that's fine. That um, is okay. Obviously, in retrospect, maybe I shouldn't have gone for the conservative target, or should have at least split it. But that's okay. Those things happen. Always good to evaluate that though, but uh, the break is happening. So for those that did stay in, I would probably start to look for 110. Or if you feel ambitious or want to trail stop it, you know, the 108 uh, level, 10808 could be a, another good take profit. Probably exited on Friday. And that also makes a lot of sense. I stayed in that trade over the weekend, um, but I can imagine that uh, most or some of you at least exit that trade. Now I went out of the, I took actually profit on these dojis here. My target got missed by one pip, and maybe that's a weakness of myself. You know, everyone has their own kind of thing. Even after all those years of trading, I don't like it if my trade profit gets missed by a pip. And I saw this smaller bullish candle, and that's where I took profit for almost 100 pips there. Uh, and uh, but it was just a little pullback before we actually, you can see, it had a strong drop. So. If I would have used my own time factor rule, perhaps it would have helped me a lot. Five to six candles not breaking the bottom would have meant that I probably stay in this trade, mostly because I was sleeping at that time. But the sixth candle, I think, if I count correctly, sixth candle did break. So also from my rules perspective, uh, the momentum keeps pushing. All right, and we see another bearish candle. So the momentum is certainly rolling. It's certainly continuing. Anyone who's in that trade uh, from, from last week and anywhere from here that we're talking about the reversal spot or bearish engulfing twins or even this triangle here somehow at the break or at the turn of the triangle, uh, if you're in that trade or even this break here, then I would put the stop loss probably above these engulfing twins on the four-hour chart right here at 111. 
40-ish. That's the open, the high of today as well. Now, for those that are not in the trade, uh, I personally am not a big fan of trading breakouts below big, big corrections like this. We got two correction patterns. Basically, we have, first of all, this triangle that got broken. And then we had a very, very extended and steep channel like this, corrective channel. And then we got the break here. And then we had a small corrective pattern and another break. So you see, uh, today's focus is, is, is on patterns. And you can see that a lot of these patterns um, will give, give us good clues about how to trade and where to trade and, and which direction to trade. And uh, obviously, some of these trades could have been a break or a turn at resistance or a break of support, etc. Right? What I'm looking for, when, but all together though, even though we had a couple of patterns within this, this entire zone itself is one big correction zone. So within that big red box, we did have a couple of those patterns within those boxes, right? But all in all, it's just one big massive correction that has lasted now almost two months. Now, I don't want to pat myself on the shoulder uh, too much here, but uh, ironically, in, in the Dutch web, Dutch site of Arma Markets, I wrote an article uh, about here, actually, that I said that the dollar yen should continue that week quickly to break this bottom. Otherwise, we could get a substantial correction. That indeed took place. And uh, the substantial correction actually initiated a triple bottom. Now, the reason why I think it, it there's a good chance it might break this time, and it seems like it's doing so at the moment, is because uh, it's probably going to break this entire correction box. So from that point of view, if we zoom out to the daily to see that a bit better, we can see that we have momentum here. This is a big correction box or maybe even a ascending wedge on the daily chart. We can see that a bit better. The ascending wedge. And let me just add a trend line like this to make that a bit better or more clear. All right. So, and maybe even here. Like that. So this ascending wedge is, uh, is about to break to the downside. We got, uh, lower highs and flat bottoms, right? And we got a lot of momentum here. Now, the reason why I'm not particularly fond of trading the break of, of a big pattern like that uh, is because I, I like smaller and medium corrections and trading those. I don't like trading massive corrections. It's, it's a gut feeling. We talked about gut feelings uh, last week. Um, it's something that, in my experience, often turns out to be a bit disappointing. More often, I get anyhow a chance to enter later on. So what my trick is basically to wait for a smaller pattern after the break of the big pattern. So for instance, that could have been, if you, if you consider this to be a big pattern right here with the red lines, right? Then the smaller pattern was right here after the break. All right. That's just one, one idea. Or if you're looking for a small pattern uh, after the break, if you consider this to be a big pattern, of course, we know that the blue circle is a small pattern on, on a four-hour daily chart. But if you look on a 30-minute chart, okay, let's go to the 30-minute chart. This is then looking like a sizable correction on a 30-minute chart relative to the, to the time frame. So if you're looking for a, a pattern after the pattern, right, in that case, we would have to probably wait for the break pullback. That could have been one. Or if you're looking for more of a chart pattern, then probably this bull flag right in here. Uh, sorry, pair flag. I always get those mixed up. <laughs> right? So my little trick, pattern after the pattern. Often, the first pattern after the big pattern is broken is smaller, and the chance of continuation is, is very, uh, very high. So that is... Well, yeah, my kind of like trick or, or tip, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and that's what I would be waiting for here. In this case, the time frame of choice, I think, is four-hour chart because it is a big pattern on a four-hour chart. It's not so big, actually, on the daily chart. So for those that trade daily, I'm not sure if there are anyone here, this might not be a big pattern. This is just a medium pattern. So it all depends on the perspective, right? Daily chart, it's a medium pattern. 
Nothing wrong with the break here. That wouldn't necessarily take a pending order. I'm not big on pending orders anyhow. But uh, what could be a good idea, for instance, just looking at this daily candle, letting this daily candle finish, right? Uh, letting it close at the end of the day. Check if the daily close is near the low. If it's within 30% of the low, it should be fine. Well, preferably 20. Uh, that's a strong candle. It's a strong breakout candle. Triple bottom is broken. I think at the moment, price is already hitting 110.30. The low here was 110.70. That means we're not having a quadruple bottom because we had a break of more than 15 pips. 15 pips is the margin of error for any double bottom, triple bottom, or perhaps quadruple bottom. So we broke that margin of error, and uh, we're, we're getting a break. Now, will this break last? That depends on the close of this daily candle. A good, strong close indicates that the momentum is breaking support. The momentum is stronger than the support level. Price is, the, is, is communicating that to us. So anyone who's trading the daily, or maybe even the four-hour chart, would be, I think, or maybe I should talk about myself. Uh, if I am trading the daily chart, then that's what I would be waiting for, right? Uh, so in that case, a bit of a pullback to retrace that daily candle or today's daily candle uh, is, uh, is, I think, a good approach. I would put a stop loss above the daily high, which is probably 111.36. Uh, and uh, I would maybe even put a fib on this daily candle like this. Can't read it too well, so let's go to the hourly chart. Now, of course, today is not finished yet, so this can go way lower. But a hook back, obviously, to the broken bottom at around... One second. 111, uh, 11075, all of those levels could be resistance for a turnaround. I would expect on a four hour chart a reasonably small pattern, a small bear flag, and a continuation. That small bear flag on the four hour chart would be basically just a simple retracement uh, of the daily candle. And uh, we could see something like this tomorrow, hopefully, if, uh, if that does get retraced. Maybe something like this could be tomorrow's daily candle. We're trading this daily impulse. It's always, as you can see, we are the daily impulse. Why? Because we got majority of bearish candles. We have three bearish candles out of a maximum of six. Uh, the bearish candles are strongest, biggest, size-wise. The close is near. Most of these bearish candles have closes relatively near the low. So as this momentum continues, trail stopping the candle highs on this daily chart, right, would be one way of using a trail stop. Now the four-hour chart. One way for us to, for me to understand whether this uh, this breakout is working is first of all that we got a good four-hour candle, right? But for me, still the same thing I think applies. I would rather still wait for a pullback actually to about that broken bottom. Let me take a look at the hourly. This can still move on, but you see the momentum has lasted already for quite a while. So for me to trade it now, it doesn't make sense. The the trade has already, this is actually still a continuation on the hourly chart at least of this break right out here, right here, breakout. And here perhaps one continuation possibility, but all the way down here, I don't think it's a good good spot. Yes, it could continue a few pips. What I'd rather see is actually a bit of a, a bear flag or some kind of chart pattern. Because in my opinion, the momentum has lasted quite a while, quite a distance. And I think from a reward to risk perspective, it's too late to to trade this breakout because it broke out already a long time ago. Despite the fact that this bottom just broke out, the initial move started way earlier than that.
So from my point of view, four hour chart, wait for, or even let me see, daily chart. We're looking, I'm looking for a move tomorrow. So let's see. Uh, 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 that would be. I think best probably the daily chart and daily candle. All right. Let's see. That is, there was indeed a contracting triangle breakout right here. This one, that was a contracting triangle, and this was a channel right there. So a lot of neat patterns, and then here was a smaller channel again. On this time frame, at least. This is the four-hour chart. Right there. So a lot of patterns on this one. So always interesting. I think patterns uh, really are very valuable. I love trading patterns. I look, love looking at patterns and spotting them and finding them. and from my point of view, breaks of those patterns are great or turns at those patterns are great. Uh, but uh, I rather trade the pattern after the pattern. Um, so if it's too big, once again, just to summarize, uh, then uh, I rather take wait for the next pattern. If it's a medium sized pattern or a smaller pattern, then uh, the initial break is often uh, a bit more reliable. But even then, the, the pattern after the pattern is still is still okay. It's just I'm saying that with the medium or smaller one, uh, typically the break is is a bit better. All right, let's see. Beverly is saying also get annoyed with the TP that is missed by a couple of pips. Yeah, I think once that has happened, I what I mean. It seems like a pattern almost like every time you got a you got a TP in mind and you know it's comes within 10 15 pips and I'm like oh so close you know and especially with a big swing trade for instance that could happen um, uh, easily obviously so that's always a bit of a a psychological battle for me you know and probably others as well how much patience do I show especially when I get close to the TP Alrighty. I trade daily for a long term four hours for the rest. Yep. Yeah, four hour I think is a is is a great chart. And hourly is, is good to zoom in and see, you know, if if there's a good chance of uh of a continuation or something like that. <clears throat> That's always a good good way to uh see more details. Alrighty. So let's take a look at this euro dollar. And once again, for those that joined a bit later, uh, Admiral Markets has a deposit bonus special for April and May uh, that uh, should be for both uh, existing and new traders. So if you're already an Admiral Markets trader, uh, then this could be an interesting opportunity for you to add some capital. If you haven't joined Admiral Markets as yet, then uh, this might be a good opportunity to to change uh animal markets also won for those that don't know the best mt4 broker award in the uk of 2015 so i mean the campaign this this bonus this is positive bonus is not the only thing that uh is, is positive and uh, there are a lot of good things going on with uh software it but also with we hope education and uh, analysis we do our best at least so uh, plenty of good reasons, I think. And Nanita and myself uh, also try to to help traders more that, that join Admiral Markets through us. Uh, you know, so if you're interested in that, just write us an email as well. Uh, and because you know we we want to support Admiral Markets traders as much as we can, so we, we provide even extra stuff uh, to those that join Admiral Markets uh, as well. So. That's something, so it's a good, maybe a good time to, to think about it, all right? So 
Anyhow. Oh, thank you, Beverly. That's always great to hear that. Appreciate it. So the euro dollar, we got basically a bit of a triangle uh, or a head and shoulders here. Um, another pattern perhaps, but it's a reversal pattern, so we've got to always be careful with that. You can see that probably a bit better on the hourly chart because we can zoom in. And we see a resistance level, right, around 114. We've got a bit of a left shoulder, we've got a bit of a head here, and we've got a bit of a triple right shoulder. <laughs> Sometimes these patterns don't look uh, as nice as we would like to uh, to have them. Um, the right shoulder is not totally uh, in sync with the left, but it will do. We also had a bit of a, basically a bit of a uh, triangle like that. Contracting triangle possible, and that seems to be broken to the downside at this moment. All right, so that could be another way. This could be also the neckline. Let's draw that potential neckline like this. That seems to be uh, being tested as we speak. So we got a lot of things to discuss here as well. We got the potential head and shoulders, uh, potential triangles and trend lines to discuss. And uh, this could be, you know, indicating that price might make a bit of a retracement. Now, overall, though, despite this one hour or 30 minute at your shoulders pattern, of which the target would be to place a fib from here to here, and to look for the minus 272 or minus 61.8 target, I would say. Uh, those levels, 113, 112.75, as I said yesterday in my recap video, would be levels that I think the euro dollar could bounce back up potentially. So those would be targets for downside. Now trading head and shoulders breakouts, especially I think is, is difficult. And um, because it's a reversal and it's trading a breakout after reversal, which means that price can really run into support and continue with the trend rather soon. So I am not a, really a big fan of, of trading that. But uh, if good price action sometimes, if there is space uh, and there's good price action accompanied with it, well, it could still be uh, feasible. Maybe a four-hour candle like this or even an hourly candle like this, this is already showing a lot of uh, strength. The candle itself is pretty big for an hourly. Uh, so, you know, that's that's pretty impressive price action. Now, MJ say, says it's hitting at 89 EMA. And that's actually a very good observation. The, the thing is, as I just said, actually, is that with reversals, especially breakouts after reversals, you might be bumping into support faster than you even imagined possible. And that's always the risk. And the 89 EMA that MJ is pointing to just perfectly kind of supports that idea. So there is a, a substantial you know, risk with, with trading breakouts, out, breaks of necklines after these head and shoulder patterns. Unless there's solid evidence of some reversal perhaps, um, those are always a bit risky. Evidence of a solid reversal could be, for instance, a major fib confluence of support or resistance multiple divergences on multiple time frames so the more clues you add the more likely that that head and shoulders is not just a small correction but is actually going to lead to a much bigger reversal right if that's the case you know those are more interesting obviously than those small corrections and small corrections could be better just to skip it and wait for the for the trend ticket team now, what's my, basically my judgment on the euro dollar? Is this a small retracement or a big reversal? And I would say it's probably a retracement. I could be wrong, and then I missed a trade, a reversal trade, but I don't think that's a big deal. Um, but I think it's still more of a retracement. Let's talk about that. There is divergence between these stops. That's true. So that's one small point in favor of a reversal. For those, yeah, great question, Ali. For those that don't know, don't know any of these, uh, the, the, the patterns, the specific pattern by any chance, just feel free to uh, to ask me. 
the head and shoulders is basically um, it's copying the name is copied from uh, us humans and I'm going to show you how terribly I draw all right <laughs> this is some uh, person with uh, the left shoulder the right shoulder and a head so that same type of pattern we see in the market as well how is that possible you might ask well it would be like this this is the left shoulder this is kind of like the arm this is the head and this is the right shoulder and uh, that is basically the head and shoulders pattern the left and right shoulders are equal, often equal to each other and the head often just sticks out a bit above those shoulders so for instance if price would be looking like this obviously this can never be a head and shoulders because look this left shoulder is way lower than than current price often you see that the head is just sticking out a bit above the left shoulder like this all right so does that make sense olive now the neckline is when you basically connect the bottom here the left the origin of the left shoulder with the place after the head has been formed and then you get this purple trend line here that connects and that, that's the neckline as they call it so it could be like this could be the neckline or you can draw it like that or both you can draw all right so let me know if that's that's clear so for our chart if we get a strong candle like that uh, i do think we can get a retracement but not a reversal i was saying why is that let's talk a bit about that i got to sort out what i keep on the chart here for the weekly one second All right, look at this weekly candle. Close very near the high, strong, bullish, um, engulfing the week before that. I don't think that looks like a reversal signal on the weekly to me. So from that point of view, I think that we'll have to break, I mean, there's a good chance, let me say it this way, that, that last week's high will be broken. I therefore, just based on this weekly candle, consider that to be uh, a retracement. And if we put a fib on that weekly candle, 113, I think is the 50, and 112.75, I, I, if I remember correctly, is the 61.8 fib. Plus, we didn't get really to that 115 target. We got close. We got what, about one, what was it, 114? Let me check. 114.37. Uh, but we just didn't get to that 114. Yeah, 114.75, 115. I think there's still a bit of space for that. But more primarily, basically, that weekly candle. If you remember last week, I was saying that 114.75 is the target, but I would be more aiming for 114.50. Now, in this case, we got just a tad shy of that. We got up to 114.35. So even 114.50, we just missed. Uh, 114, 115, we got a couple of resistance levels here to think of once we get there, if we get there. Here and here, there's a big resistance zone. So I'm not saying that, you know, this resistance zone is not important. definitely is. But considering the price action, I think a break of last week's high is possible, or likely, I should say. And once we do, then we're going to really slam into a major level. 115, the target, and a lot of resistance here. If that level were to break for whatever reason, then 117 is the next level to think about. That's the high here, a 38.2 fib here, and a minus 61.8 target there. So after 115, I think there's a good space, potential space there up to 117. All right, 
Last month's candle was bullish. We already broke last month's high, so that in a way has already fulfilled itself. That's already could be enough, but I think that it will push a bit higher, as I said. Uh, all in all, this is a pattern as well. This is a double bottom and this is a consolidation pattern, right? So most likely this pattern will finish at some point and continue its downtrend. All right? Not maybe uh, last month, but maybe this month or next month or even uh, June. Now, what's that green zone Beverly was talking about? And I just drew, that was just manually drawn, by the way, uh, basically indicating that here is a, a top and here's a bottom. It seemed like that was a confluence zone. Uh, also, a 50 fib. If you draw a fib from here to here, let me do that quickly. There we go. It's roughly a 50 fib, just a tad below it, actually. All right. Most importantly, probably there's a target here and a target there. 113.08, 112.74. So I think those are good turning spots for upside. And that's where I would expect uh, this zigzag uh, to, uh, to move to. So is it worth trading to that level? Maybe if the candle stops like this, maybe if it retraces and there's a potential uh, bounce here, four move down to these fibs maybe uh if we get a retracement on the four hour candle with a stop loss just above this candle high with a target down here or here still looks like an okay reward to risk not my favorite trade though for me my favorite trade would be to see uh, a bounce basically on the audi chart probably engulfing twins uh, on the 272 target or the minus 618 target for a bounce to the upside all right, if price does not show any price action at these FIB targets, uh, basically, I then would not consider a, um, a long. I would want to see really a reaction to it because we could just could see momentum push through like this and continue through these targets, right? I want to see a reversal pattern basically uh, at these targets to confirm that this is a zigzag correction pattern, all right? Otherwise, momentum could just push through it, and I don't want to get stuck in a trade like that. If momentum does push through with so much power like that, uh, and we get a triangle, then tomorrow I'll probably be saying that you know everything looks different now. All right, so let's see which one we get. Now, if price does break, on the other hand, if it doesn't get to these targets somehow, and it just keeps building this triangle and starts to move up and down like this, obviously, if it then starts to break above this resistance, there could be a breakout trade to the upside. And we could see a continuation pattern. All right, that could happen too. Now, no matter what you do, though, always use a stop loss, right? Because uh, no matter what trade you think could be invincible, uh, even though a bounce trade looks great here at this moment, right? Uh, there's never ever a, such a thing as a guaranteed win or a guaranteed thing or trade. Um, you know, a, a friend of mine had a trade that uh, didn't have a stop loss. It wasn't even, it was his fault, but he didn't even, he was not managing the trade. Uh, he had actually, he let someone else manage it. And uh, that person uh, slash company did not use stop loss so and yeah he lost he lost everything he lost all his capital so it's it's you know you don't want to put that risk because you don't have a stop loss your risk is unlimited um, so I was a while back though luckily I mean I, I think he uh, he got over it, but it's obviously a big, big, big hit indeed. Um, it was about uh, nine years ago and, or eight years ago, and he was trading the euro dollar. Or not he, but you know, the managed account was trading euro dollar up in here, and they were buying it. Um, and obviously, then the euro dollar started to, to fall and severely fall. 
And they were saying, yeah, we'll bounce back, we'll bounce back. Because, yeah, it wasn't an uptrend, right? But uh, we know that it never recovered to that level in any case since since that moment. It never really got back fully to that level. And uh, what was, you know, too much leverage to wait out that long with such a steep drop. So, yeah, you lost everything. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands. So that was so that's why you really have to be very, very careful. Um, always use a stop loss. Make the risk small, you know, what you feel comfortable with, whether it's a 1% or it's a, a quarter percent. Just make sure that you feel comfortable with the drawdown. 1% size like, sounds maybe like small risk, but if you think about that, you know, anyone can have five losses in a row, well, how do you feel about 5% all of a sudden? Maybe not as comfortable. Or 10%. Uh, it doesn't have to be 10 losses in a row, but it could be uh, out of 20 trades, you could have a slump where you have 15 losses and or 14 losses and, and three wins and three break-evens. So how does that 10% feel suddenly, right? 10% might be good for you. That's great. Well, then... Um, then that's fine. But take a look at what you expect from your strategy regarding drawdowns and increase that by a bit. If your stats show you that, you know, the last 100 trades, you had a drawdown of uh, 11%, then it doesn't mean that 11% will be the max in the next 100 trades. So always take into account just a, a bit worse scenario than you might feel comfortable with. And uh, if you don't feel comfortable with a drawdown of 50%, right, then you shouldn't be trading more than 2% risk at least. If you feel comfortable with 10%, but not more, then you might want to think about a quarter percent, for instance, or a half a percent, or you know, something like that. Um, depends all on your targets, too. But anyhow. Yeah, he would never luckily do that again because uh, now he's now he's trading himself. So yeah, he, he got so annoyed and mad that he thought, okay, now I'm going to learn it. <laughs> so that motivated him, and uh, now he's he's a, he's a great trader. Uh, so you know, there's there's a positive twist to it at the end. So let's take a look at uh, pound USD. I see one question at least. MJL four. Not sure what you meant with L4. Yeah, that's a better approach indeed. Exactly. I started trading uh, 2008, uh, but basically I did already look at markets before that, uh, dating back already to basically when I was uh, in university already. I was already looking uh, you know, at the markets, um, reading about it and stuff like that. It's basically because my dad was interested, or not interested, but his job was a sales manager. And uh, he was dependent on exchange rates for sales um, because he was selling internationally. So, he, you know, if, if there was a strong dollar, uh, it, it was very difficult for him to sell. If it was a weak dollar, everyone wanted to buy all of a sudden, right? Price was a lot better. So he was very dependent, and yeah, the exchange rates were always going up and down, up and down, and he was always complaining about it, always wondering what would be next and what was going on, um, and he didn't really have much much idea about it. He was just following it every day, looking at the figure, but nothing more than that. So that's where my interest kind of peaked, because I was like, okay, why, and can, can there be something that might help him understand what's going on? You know? So that's really where my interest came from. Uh, from that moment as a teenager already. Uh, and then I slowly developed that uh, interest uh, in more and more in university and beyond. So that's that's how it started for me at least. So the pound has another, a lot of uh, patterns available here on the, on the currency pairs. We got a pound USD, we have a triangle, basically a triangle within the triangle because we got uh, about four purple lines here. And uh, yeah, you can see that basically price is respecting resistance, respecting support. And uh, you can see 
that uh, I think we will need to break below this level to really have more chance of a breakout to the downside. Um, we would probably need to break above this level for a bigger zigzag to the upside if that happens, because we do have divergence between these bottoms. That's a divergence pattern. And the target of a divergence pattern is the 144 EMA close right up in here. That's the original target. But I mean, if price is showing a pattern like this and it breaks support, then there is a chance we, not, we, we will not get there, right? We'll miss that target. Targets can be missed. They're not, you know, sure things or, or guarantees. So a break of support might, uh, might happen and that might invalidate that target. Now, in the meantime, before we get to that moment that we have to break here or here, we're actually in a smaller target, a smaller triangle. So before that happens, we could break out here or here. Now, from my perspective, there's been a lot of momentum up and down. But I would say the up momentum still has a bit of a preference for myself due to a couple of things. We got momentum here that I think is still the overriding one compared to this downside. This looks more like a zigzag correction. And we got a pretty strong engulfing master candle here. So this still looks more like a retracement. As long as price stays above this 140. What is it? One forty-one ninety. I think that's still more of a retracement than a continuation uh, to the downside. Right? So more of a retracement for more upside. Sorry. The breakout would occur though if we got a good four-hour candle above this trend line. I would look for a hook back and a continuation up to that resistance spot. Now, in the meantime, there could be a bounce trade right here. So within this triangle, there could be a bounce trade right there. Uh, price has moved down like this, but probably is approaching a kind of a target. Yeah, it's at the minus 61.8 target. So there are a couple of ways to approach that uh, bounce trade potential at the bottom of this triangle. Uh, I could try to take an entry right here, right now, based just on this, this bullish candle. But I think that most of the time, what I like is on a five minute chart, especially if we got a momentum like this going, uh, is to, to wait for a bit of a hook back here and failure to break this bottom. In this case, this momentum on a five minute chart, I would say is uh, basically could be a potential reversal coming. Last week, we had a classical example of when we got five minute momentum I was actually waiting for a pullback for more upside. That momentum early in the, in the London session was actually the direction I expected price to continue in the New York session. Now, I think that the table is turned around. I think that, that moment, this momentum is not necessarily the direction New York has to go. It could right? We could get a breakout to the downside. It might be. But I think that there's a good chance that this, this momentum is just a bigger zigzag on a 15-minute chart here where we get a correction back to support. Considering the other things I just mentioned, therefore, I think that a bit of a hook back here and a failure to break this bottom could mean that this momentum is over. And that could be an interesting reversal trade on a five-minute chart uh, but of course, there are reasons. There are other reasons to to look for this trade, in my opinion. The triangle, the the support of the triangle, uh, and the, the the bigger time frame picture uh, as well. I think support the potential bounce here, the trend line, etc. The origin of the uh, of the um, the bottom here. So a stop loss. The safest stop loss, for my opinion, would be 141, below 141.85, 88. A risky stop loss would be below this bottom. But that's a risky one. But uh, sometimes it does work very well.
All righty. Well, I don't think I have much to add, in fact. The fit bottom, I'm using... Oh, I just put this fib on just a moment ago to see if we get a breakout above this triangle, what the target is. All right, but we can take it off because that's not really happening at the moment, so it's not so relevant right now. Better fib. I don't know if there's, I don't think it makes sense to draw any fibs at this moment because we're in a triangle of the triangle, so probably, you know, not that relevant. But if we get a break, though, we can put a fib from here to here or from here to here, and we'll get targets up in here, right? Now you'll see bounces here and here. And for instance, here too, if we put a fib from here to here, you'll see price bouncing at the 61.8, for instance, stuff like that. Now, if it breaks to the downside, then I would start flipping it and start putting fibs from here to here. Right, or even later on, uh, might even put fib from here to here to look for targets to the downside. Oh. There we go. And uh, 137.75, still an open target there. All right. Goody good. So that's the dollar, pound, dollar. Uh, so, yeah, oh, thank you, Beverly. And by the way, uh, my dad is still, uh, he finds it interesting, this, this Forex uh, market, but he's still uh, still grasping, uh, you know, how, uh, for instance, Elliott Wave, I talk about Elliott Wave, and he's still like, even though I talked about it for so long, he's still, you know, <laughs> still puzzled by uh, by it. But yeah, any way, this maybe not the easiest thing to uh, uh, to uh, to explain as well. Let's see, what else can we look at? Pound yen. Well, looks like a break here. We have divergence on the daily chart, but if a break is happening, then a break is happening. And uh, we did get some, you know, decent consolidation zone. So not always, you know, is a divergence leading to an impulsive correction. It could also, uh, you know, create a corrective pattern. And that's what we got. So that could be it. We had a, a bit of a triangle on this chart too, like this. And uh, you know that could be all of the correction after that daily channel, that, that daily uh, divergence, break pullback on the four-hour chart, and we're continuing. This is a big pattern on the four-hour chart. It's a medium pattern on the daily. So from a daily perspective, I think uh, an entry here with the stop loss above could have been good and it's going well it's on its way because it's 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 a medium pattern on a pound yen daily so it could have been traded directly I think on the daily chart but those don't trade daily charts with four hour charts I think uh, we're looking for a pattern after the pattern this is uh, not really a pattern it's just a pullback so that could have been one way of trading it but we're still looking for the the, the smaller pattern which hasn't occurred yet so some kind of bear flag or triangle here and that could be a very good trade for the pound yen continuation. On the hourly chart, we don't have any patterns. It's just a break pull that continue. So nothing to add there. So I'm looking for a pattern before trading it to the downside. Your yen, we're getting a break right here as we speak. Also close to resistance, trend line here. We already had a break of this trend line. 
and now could be getting another break. Pretty big channel on a four-hour chart too. So again, a pattern after the pattern, I think, is is the best. But there's a lot of momentum here. So whatever I think the the odds here are, I think they are pretty high. Uh, either a triangle or a zigzag pattern or a bear flag, all of that would be great for continuation. I think the euro yen, pound yen uh, look bearish, just like the dollar yen. So that looks good. Uh, regarding the Aussie. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's see. We are getting the bigger bearish retracement. I was talking about just in the video, the double divergence that was present here. And we're getting a move back to, to the trend line, which could be a bouncing spot. So we see the dollar strengthening, but it, that it could easily be a retracement for more weakness. But we'll have to see if this trend line holds because the four hour chart is engulfing the pretty interesting four hour candle that we saw just one candle ago here. This one. Right there. So, you know, that might be something to be cautious of for people, for, for me that is looking for a bounce off that trend line. Uh, if we do get a break. Let's see. Not easy to trade reversals like this. There's always you know little bit limited space most of the time. But if there's a if there's a daily candle like this, the close near the low, then a bit of a hook back to that broken trend line we could see price fall down to the 50 fib at 74. So something like that. Might occur. So there could be a, a tight trade for myself as a reversal squeeze to the downside. And you never know, of course, the price doesn't have to respect the 50 fib or this trend line, this green one. But there's a good chance it will, and we get a bounce there. Now, will price bounce at this support level? I don't know. We we'll have to see. We we'll have to see how this. I would say this hourly candle. How does how does this close? How does the next one close? If we get engulfing twins here, then that could be the bounce. Certainly, the Aussie will also be dependent on uh, how the uh, the dollar moves. All right, pound odd. Uh, we had the, the zigzag pattern last week and then turned, remember, right up to the minus 61.8 target, then turned for another lower low, but now getting a pretty substantial rally. And uh, we got about a triple divergence in the meantime, or is it a quadruple? I'm not sure. I'm losing count. But you would say that eventually we'll at least get back to this purple moving average. So I think there's a good chance we might see a bit of retracement still to the upside. Or even a big retracement. You would say that one time, at one point, we're going to get a bigger retracement. This is a substantial momentum already. The angle of the channel is weakening, as you can see becoming more corrective. Here we had a lot of momentum. Now it's kind of curving a bit. Uh, I would not be looking for shorts, any new shorts. I still was okay with a short here at the target. I, I would not be doing that anymore. I don't think it uh, is good to scale in anymore with uh it's 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 too too strong. We see a lot of green 
oscillator bars here, I think it's too risky now. Uh, great job, Beverly, with taking profit on the pound odd. That's the a new trade, not the old one, right? From You're still probably trail stopping the daily fractals, so you're probably above the screen line. Uh, moving average, it's uh, 144 EMA here and a 21 EMA. Take profit on scaling. Great job. Perfect, because that was an excellent moment to, uh, I'm not sure where you took the exit, but what, I mean, that you're out is great because uh, it didn't push too far, I think. Um, is there any correlation with the pound dollar? If pound breaks the level you showed, then it will also affect, yeah, definitely, definitely. And if the pound usually breaks to the upside, then the pound out also has less chance of, of making a lot of downside. Now, of course, we have two things to look at, the pound and the Aussie, so that's only part of the equation, but there's certainly uh, a factor to uh, to think about. If the pound starts to really move up a lot and the Aussie doesn't, well, then the pound odd would uh, will be moving up. Indeed. You're in the zenith. Yeah, we definitely can look at that. One eighty six fifty six. Nice. Aiming for the the bottom here. Great. Great stuff. So, but any pips were made by Beverly on the pound odd. I think that the pound odd has, uh, is now probably Beverly's favorite pair. <laughs> How about the year odd? Is that something that comes close? Not really. I don't like this this, this pair as much as the, as the pound odd, to be honest. Interesting trend line, perhaps, but otherwise... It's uh, it's a slow mover and it's it's getting some legs to the upside, but doesn't look that interesting at the moment. You're in New Zealand. Let me put on the simple template here. All right, let me put things in perspective. Got a big momentum. That's still pretty much dominating. After the momentum, we're having a triangle. So that's the uh, the pattern at the moment that's dominating the the charts. I would say. Let's uh, correct that just a tad. Okay, good. All righty. Now, we're getting a potential break of that pattern, as you can see. <clears throat> but one thing to always keep an eye on is not only the pattern, but horizontal resistance as well. And support, obviously. So price is breaking up. We're pretty close to that. But... Uh, Let's see if it, if it can push through. Let's take a look at the daily ch chart again. If we get a good daily candle here that is able to, to, to push through that a bit like that, then I think a retracement of yesterday's today's candle, actually, um, could be an interesting uh, way to capture a breakout here on the Uranus to the upside. So that could be interesting for tomorrow, I would say, depending on how today closes. Otherwise, on lower time frames, I don't see much really to trade. I mean, this is just a rocket. And it's not good to trade rockets like that. I mean, I do sometimes trade part of it, right, or try to catch on still, If but if this seems a bit too far now. I mean, it could still push through. Uh, and certainly continue for, for a few more pips. Let's take a look at the 15-minute chart, but I'm not sure if it's... I don't think it's worth that risk.
could have been maybe uh, this is a strong four hour candle, you know, for instance, or just one retracements of those candles uh, could be worth it, right? But especially the second is is not easy. Might not even be that good because there's a strong trend line there as well. So, you know, that's something to think about. But retracements like here, for instance, or here, or here, those uh, look fine. But those were in the past, so now it doesn't look that uh, that useful at the moment. Maybe tomorrow. Let's take a look at Pound New Zealand as well. A uh, four-hour chart of this candle, maybe, maybe, but I would like to see. I think the re, I don't know the resistance seems very close to me, and this is a rather small candle at the moment. It's possible. I I can see your point though, definitely. Oh, the entire the entire move. Let's do that. You mean like this? It could be. It could be indeed. But we might not even get that strong of a pullback because we do have bullish candles at this moment, like that, and we could see a, a follow through. We we'll have to see if this breakout really gets rejected. If it does, we'll do see. A pullback, indeed, maybe to that 50 you mentioned. Um, if we do get a successful breakout, we probably will not get even that pullback. Yes, agree. The pullback of some size is, is good. Uh, I agree with uh, Beverly says that that's her that's her approach, that's her plan, and that makes a lot of sense. And uh, what type of pullback, I think, depends on how this daily candle closes. If we get a wick, we might get a bigger pullback, right? That that, that goes back to maybe even the trend line or at least the 50. If, um, if it's a strong candle, we might only get a pullback of today's daily candle. So let's see. All right. So that was the all the euro, odd pound, the euro pound versus odd New Zealand crosses i think i didn't look at the kiwi dollar yet quickly it doesn't look that interesting to me could still be retracing but it's a very choppy uh, uptrend dollar cad got to move up to the target as you can see that target um was a turning spot and price broke through this triangle with some momentum, and now it's making a correction again as well. And that triangle is over now, and now we're getting in this channel. But we also have lingering divergence. So it is not something I think is very interesting to trade. Either way, at the moment, Pound Swissy, I think. Beverly, I think, mentioned pound Swissy. All right, so uh, continuation to the downside on that pound Swissy uh, Wednesday within this strong downtrend channel. Another bearish weekly. And that was a good break of this small little channel. That's a small channel on a four hour chart, right? This one here. This is a medium channel. And if a pattern would be as big as this, then this would be a big pattern. Actually, this was a pattern. Let me take off these two lines. Pound Swissy is actually in a descending wedge. This is the resistance right here. And we can even maybe move that just a tad. Like this with a flat bottom. So that was a descending wedge. So we broke that descending wedge, but it is a big pattern. So now I'm waiting for the pattern after the pattern. Um, with this smaller channel, the green channel there, I think a break would have been great. Somewhere in here, a trade of that would have worked out fine, as we can see. Now we're getting a break of a big pattern, so I need a small pattern, and we're building a small pattern perhaps right now. 
right? So one more push up and we get some kind of bull flag like bear flag like that and a break of that would be an interesting continuation pattern. And if you look at this channel on the hourly chart, this is, I would say, a medium channel. On the four-hour chart, it's a small channel. One-hour chart, it's a medium one. And you see that the breakout here worked out fine too. But on a 50-minute chart, it would actually be a big pattern. And let's see if we can find a pattern after the pattern on this 50-minute chart. And we got a, actually kind of some kind of expanding wedge there, interesting enough. That doesn't happen um too often and then we get a bear flag another bear flag quite a lot of patterns here and not much momentum to the downside but finally we get a bigger break and again not all these patterns i would say are, are is, i would definitely not trade all these patterns don't get me wrong but one of these earlier patterns probably would uh would be the best but still even even depends if there's no divergence like there was no divergence between these bottoms uh, even uh, a break here would be fine. So anyone, uh, I think, in that trade, this is the master candle. A stop loss above that candle should be fine as a trail, I would say. All right, folks, if you have any questions, by all means, let me know. Otherwise, I want to let you know that uh, today we have an extra webinar, actually. Normally, we have them on Thursdays, but tonight we got an extra Pro Learning uh, Lab webinar. We're going to take a look at trading plans. I know it's not the most exciting topic, but uh, you know, a robust plan, as written here, is, is really important regarding confidence and consistency. So I, I hope you'll make time or, or find time to uh, to join tonight tomorrow we got webinar strategy same time same uh, place as today in the evening then it takes a look at new candlestick patterns so you can continue and uh, learn more patterns and on thursday evening 5 p.m uk time we're going to talk about discretionary trading and how to set up uh, the profit analysis so tonight wednesday two webinars morning and evening, and then Thursday night also. So looking forward to, to see you all then. I uh, wish everyone great trading. Thanks so much for your comments and for being here. And don't forget that you have the opportunity as well to find uh, a helping hand here from Admiral Markets with a uh, deposit bonus as mentioned already earlier. So that could be something for you. Take a look at the campaign rules and risk disclosure to find out all the details, but you can at least check out, very simple by using the slider, what their potential uh, bonus could be. So take a look at that. It's valid for April and May for, for your deposit for new and existing traders with admin markets. Okay, great, Beverly. Yeah, the recording, there will definitely be a recording and uh, it will be uploaded to YouTube and the Admiral Markets YouTube channel. So you can definitely find it there. All right, wish everyone great trading. Talk to you soon. Cheers.